Hey guys, Wes here with probably my last vinyl video ever filmed in this apartment, so um, let's get into it. This is response to Tony's Mr. Fart Boy's latest thread. Um, four good questions, four challenging questions, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first question, if you woke up one day and you were completely deaf, uh, would you still collect records? What would you do with your collection? That kind of thing. Um, this is this was hard, and I've I've sort of changed my answer several times over the last week that I've been thinking about these questions. And my initial response was, well, I would I would give it away to somebody who I thought would would uh, appreciate it. You know, somebody maybe a young person who was just getting into collecting who I thought would really appreciate having my collection because it's not really there's not really much in here that's really valuable so it's not it wouldn't be worth it for me to try to sell it I don't really I'm not really into the monetary value of things as far as my collection you know I don't collect for I don't collect as an investment or anything and I don't really expect to get any money for any of this stuff I just collect because I enjoy it so my initial response was to, to give it away like I said and then I've sort of changed that a little bit. I think at first I would probably hang on to all of it just for a while, uh, maybe in the hopes that uh, my hearing would come back or there would be some kind of invention that would allow me to hear again. But if I knew for a fact that there was no way I was ever going to hear again, um, I probably would would you know do do what my initial thoughts were, were to give it to somebody who I thought would appreciate it. I might keep a few records just for that have a special uh, emotional um, attachment for me. I guess you could say I would keep a few. I think, but most of them I would give it away to somebody who I thought would appreciate it. Question number two, if digital to wherever to be able to outperform vinyl, would you change your collecting habits? Um, and it's been, been really, this is a question, a really good, really good question because I'm kind of, I'm kind of into the technology side of things and um, so this is kind of an interesting question to me. I, I've, like some other people have said, I already think there is digital that outperforms vinyl. Um, on like a DVD or Blu-ray you can get you know 96 kilohertz 24-bit audio or 192 uh, kilohertz 24-bit audio and that's just that's studio level quality there so that's going to be better than vinyl but you know CDs are 44 kilohertz and 16-bit and it's, and it's you know kind of a they were great when they came out. They were an amazing technology when they came out, but it's just shocking to me that we haven't moved beyond that. I mean, we've had DVDs for close to 15 years now, and we still don't have really have any music uses for them or anything. Um, I was kind of hoping things would move that way, where there would be DVD audio release of of out of music. Um, but the you know, the the whole downloading thing and stuff has just killed killed any quality as that there is in music. So you know you either buy a CD or vinyl, and otherwise you're just going to get a crappy download. So it's it's kind of depressing that the technology, the popular culture hasn't advanced along with the technology. We have the ability to have really high quality music. Uh, on an affordable, convenient medium, but it's just, it's not being taken advantage of at all, so it's its very disappointing. Um, you know, I have a few things that are on, on DVD audio and stuff, and they, it sounds amazing, but, you know, it's not, it's not a mainstream thing. I can't go to a store and just buy any album I want on DVD audio, so. It's disappointing if it, if it did change to where there was high quality stuff uh, being released digitally. Um, I think there would be. I wouldn't totally stop collecting vinyl. I would still be into vinyl. Uh, a lot of the newer releases, I might go back to buying digital because I was, you know, new releases. I was buying CDs for the past about ten years or so, mostly. 
was buying almost all CDs and just, you know, collecting older vinyl records. And now I've been buying new, newer vinyl just because um, CDs are getting harder to find. And just uh, I want to I want to sort of support, you know, physical copies of things. And, and the, 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 a lot of the work is effort is being put into making physical copies of vinyl better than better than anything digital. So. Yeah, if it, if it were to change, which I don't, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's just gonna be crappy MP3s for a while. I don't, I don't see any any of that changing since you know 99% of the population is just perfectly fine with that. So yeah, if it did change, I would probably change slightly. I would still collect vinyl, but I would probably buy on the new stuff I was buying. I would probably go back to buying digital, just because I do think that the higher quality digital recordings sound better than vinyl. And they're more convenient. Okay, uh, third question on your holy grail is it do you find more enjoyment out of the search or the listening? And I kind of took a third tangent on this. I kind of enjoy most finding finding something I didn't know I was looking for, finding something I didn't know existed, and that's that's why I love going to flea markets and thrift stores and just digging through and just find, you know, when I find something, wow, I didn't, I didn't even know this was a, a, a you know, available, or this has been recorded or anything, and just, that's, that's the most thrilling thing for me, because um, none of my really holy grails or anything special, I mean, uh, almost all of, all of the stuff I really want, I could just go on to Amazon or eBay and buy, it's just a matter of having the money to do it. None of it's really expensive, you know. Uh, there's one old prog record I want that's that's quite rare. It's hard to find, so. But even that pops up on eBay every now and then. It's just a matter of being willing to spend the spend the money they want for it. So, yeah, I, I much more enjoy the search, I think, rather than listening. Um, like I said, I enjoyed search. You know, finding something I really wanted for in a thrift store or flea market is is kind of my thing. You know, if I find it at a, at a record store and it costs fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever, that's not really that thrilling to me. Just to find something I really want. Okay, and the last question is suggest a record to the vinyl community. And I thought about this for a little while, and just the other night I was playing uh, "People's Key" by Bright Eyes, and. I found myself singing along to all the songs and just really, really enjoying it. And this was something, when I first got this, I really didn't fully enjoy it. There was a few songs I liked, but overall I just didn't like it that well. So uh, now that I've, I've been listening to this for a while and I put it on every couple weeks just to listen to it, and you know, I, I found that I really enjoy this album a lot. Uh, I still find the spoken word parts of it kind of hokey. But overall, I really like this album, and uh, I think it's a good album. I uh, don't know if it's still available. It might be a little more difficult to find now, but it shouldn't be too hard to find a copy. Um, but I would, I would try to find it soon because it's probably not going to be in print much longer if it even is still in print. But it's a good album. Great song. Great songwriting. Um, like I said, I found myself singing along to it, so I guess that's a sign that it's it's good. Um, yeah, those are my answers to the thread. Uh, thanks for watching. I guess next time I see you, we'll be in a new place, and uh, I'm excited about that. So, uh, see you soon. Cheers. Hey guys, just wanted to add on a quick addendum to this video that I forgot to record. Uh, I had somebody ask about my dividers for uh, vinyl recently, and I explained it in a text, but I said I would show it also. Um, these are basically just legal size manila envelopes with letters, basically uh, typed into Microsoft Word. Uh, two letters next to each other and increased the size until I got a big size on the letters and printed them out and you know folded them and cut them out and fold them in half and you know so one's on one side and one's on the other side 
and tape that up and then tape the whole edge up so it's it's not going to get frayed and then that's pretty much that's pretty much a divider right there um, I've had these for a little while now and they, they work pretty good um, I'm the most frugal person I know so I didn't want to spend you know the 30 bucks or whatever it costs to, to buy dividers and I found a pack of, of 25 mil folders for a dollar on clearance rack somewhere and put these together and didn't cost me anything so it works so that's that's pretty much all there is to it and and they do have to be legal size uh, envelopes otherwise they won't stick out far enough but these have been working good for me they don't take up much space and they didn't cost me hardly anything to make so those are my dividers uh, Thanks for the question, whoever it was. I've forgotten your name already, but uh, that's all. Cheers.